Hi everybody. Welcome to Baking for Kids. I am Miss Jen. I work at Gail Borden Library in the main building in Kids Space. And I am here today to talk to you about a very lovely seasonal thing. You might have noticed some of the white stuff falling lately. It's been getting colder. We're in December. Believe it or not, last month of 2023. I can't believe it. Yes, I'm talking about snow. And there's nothing better for me if I have to be out in the snow and the cold than to come in and have a lovely, warm, cozy cup of cocoa. However, it's hard to really do a baking segment on cocoa. Maybe cocoa bombs, which we're not going to do today, maybe in the future, but cocoa itself. So instead, I have discovered a really nice recipe for a cocoa themed baking treat. And not only that, but National Cocoa Day is Wednesday, December 13th. I love all holidays, as you know, food holidays even better. And this is one of my favorite times of year. My family celebrates Christmas, really excited about that. I love all of the things with the holiday, the decorations, the music, the special foods. So today we are gonna make uh, no bake hot cocoa fudge. I really love this recipe for a few reasons. One, gluten-free, which in my family is a big plus because someone in my family is gluten-free. And number two, I think food is a lovely way to um, express that we care about people and it's a lovely gift, especially if it's homemade. It's just a really nice thing you can take some time to do and then give someone to a gift. So it's a perfect holiday gift no matter what people are celebrating this time of year. So we're going to get started in a minute um, and we'll talk, let me talk briefly about the ingredients and the items so you can gather those. And then we're gonna just take a look at a couple books really quick because once I get started with this fudge, it's gonna be no stopping, all go. Okay, you need one microwave safe bowl. You need an eight by eight or nine by nine square pan. You need aluminum foil or parchment paper to line your eight by eight or nine by nine. And if you can, some cooking spray, nonstick spray. Uh, I have, you don't have to have all of these, but I have a one cup and a half cup measuring and a one teaspoon measuring spoon, uh, scissors in case I need to cut open any of my ingredients, a silicone spatula, you need a, like a nice big spoon or spatula for turning and mixing your ingredients. And then the ingredients themselves, you need half a stick of butter, sweetened condensed milk, two packets of instant cocoa, some milk chocolate chips, and semi-sweet. We're doing a mixture. I will say you could do all of one kind. You can do all milk, you can do all semi-sweet, whatever your chocolate bitterness, sweetness preferences. Some marshmallows, the mini ones, and then vanilla extract. So not too many ingredients. Hopefully you have some of those around just for baking in general. So that is the ingredients. You need access to a microwave, no oven today, no stove top. So like I said, this is really a nice, easy, fun recipe that kind of recreates the flavors of cocoa. Um, and then you're gonna chill it later. And that's it. It's very simple and easy. It's delicious. And it's very wintry, Christmassy, very holiday. So, but first, a couple things since we have National Cocoa Day coming up. I thought it'd be interesting to talk just a quick minute or two, because I do a lot of the STEAM programs, about how do we get chocolate? Because this whole thing is pretty fascinating. So I'm gonna step out of the frame for a minute so you guys can see the books I'm talking about. But here's one, and I really like this book a lot. It's called Beans to Chocolate. This is a nonfiction book, but it's an easier nonfiction book. There's all different levels of nonfiction in our library for kids. So this is really cool because it kind of talks about the process about how chocolate was made. Now it is on the simpler side, but I just wanted to show you a couple pages to give you an idea. Candy from trees. Do you like chocolate? I'm gonna answer that for all of us. Yes, we do. Many people do. Let's learn how it's made. And it says chocolate can be made into many types of treats like candy. Chocolate comes from Cacao trees. The trees are found in warm, wet places. They grow big fruit called pods. 
Cacao pods grow straight out of a tree's trunk and branches. Look at these pods, you guys. They are looking really huge, which is interesting. It's hard to imagine these seeds as a chocolate bar, but inside the pods are seeds. They're the cacao beans. They give chocolate its taste. Here's a fun fact. Cacao pods grow to be the size of footballs. 20 to 50 seeds grow inside each pod. Oh my gosh, size of a football. Something out of Willy Wonka. But it's not just easy like, oh, we're going to cut these open and, and make chocolate. They have to harvest beans and then they have to dry them out. So the beans are put under banana leaves to bring out their flavor. They stay there for a week and they're dried in the sun. So this worker in the picture is spreading the beads to dry them out. So, and this is really cool. Long ago, people used cacao beans as money, you guys. For example, a horse could be bought with 10 beans. I knew chocolate was both awesome and valuable. So I'm not gonna read the whole book, but it'll walk us through the process of how they take those beans and make them into chocolate. So this one is Beans to Chocolate by Linda Harrington. This book is lovely. This is a picture book called Lucky Pennies and Hot Chocolate. And there's an older guy and a little guy on the cover. My favorite person in the world is coming for a visit. Oh man, the dogs are excited. They're doing big hugs. And it looks like it's in late November for this visit, which we just had a couple weeks ago. I have a whole bunch of new knock-knock jokes for him. Knock-knock, who's there? Need a tish. Need a tish who? Why is your nose running? Oh my gosh, you guys, that's, I don't know about that. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wooden shoe. Wooden shoe who? Wooden shoe like to know. Oh my goodness. Knock, knock. Who's there? Lettuce. Lettuce who? Lettuce in. It's freezing out here. Ooh, one more, you guys. Knock, knock. Who's there? I wub. I wub who? I wub ooh too. Wow. Okay, those are some, definitely some knock knock jokes, all right. And you're gonna see they're going on adventures. They're walking around. If we see a penny, we always stop and pick it up. Heads up means a lucky penny. Ooh, who doesn't love a lucky penny, you guys? Back home, we'll make some lunch. I like crunchy, he likes creamy, both, but we're both peanut butter nuts. We love hot chocolate with as many marshmallows as we want. That kind of looks like marshmallow overload there. And you'll see they're gonna see all the kind of fun things they do together. They do the dishes together. Then it's time for dominoes. I hate to lose. Come on, just one more game. And then there's gonna be some more adventures, but I'm not gonna go too far with it because there's a big surprise, like a twist at the end. So I don't wanna spoil it. So that book was Lucky Pennies and Hot Chocolate by Carol Diggory Shields. Hot pennies, or Lucky Pennies and Hot Chocolate. And one more that's kind of interesting uh, for Miss Jen and people that are in my age range, Blizzard by John Rocco. You guys know in Chicago, or the Chicago area sometimes, we can get a lot of snow. And that happened when Miss Jen was younger. And this kind of is a story about this, even though this person lives in a different part of the country. One day when I was a young boy, nearly four feet of snow fell from the sky. This is my story. So this was back in the late 1970s. And there was a big blizzard in the Chicago area too. The first flake fell right before recess. It was followed by many, many more. 
And it looks like it's Monday there. The wind whipped up and school closed early. By the time my sister and I got home, the snow was over our boots. Wow, look at that. That's a lot of snow, you guys. The snow continued to fall through the night and I thought it would never stop. If it's all the way up to the middle of that stop sign, that's really deep. This is just the next day, Tuesday. The next morning, the snowdrifts were so high, we couldn't even open our front door. Mom's saying, be careful. So we went out the window instead. Oh my gosh, you guys, the window. That's amazing. That's how deep the snow is. The dog is going woof, woof, woof. We laughed as we sank deep into the powder, but walking was hard. It's like trying to move through the white quicksand. Every few steps I had to stop and rest. They're going, oof, woof. It's even too deep for our sled. And they're saying, we need sled dogs. When we went back inside, we were cold, wet, and tired. Mom says, welcome back, explorers. We made camp by the stove, and our feet tingled as we sipped hot cocoa made with milk. Ooh, again, hot cocoa, right? Everybody loves it. On the third day, Dad shoveled the driveway so he could get the car out when the snow plows came. Oh my gosh, look at how tall this is, you guys. It's tall as Dad, this Dad. We dug tunnels and secret rooms under the snow. An igloo can keep you warm in sub-zero temperatures. What's an igloo? That's true, right? But okay, I'm gonna do one more page and then you guys will have to, it's a to be continued. So we're on Thursday now, remember it started Monday. By day four, the plows still hadn't come. I wondered if we'd ever see grass again. All right, you guys are gonna have to check out what happens. Are the plows ever gonna come? You'll have to find out. You gotta check out Blizzard by John Rocco based on a true story about a real weather event. Okay, it's time. It's time to make the baking treat we've been talking about. So first things first, we're gonna take our pan and we are going to line it with foil. That's really just to make cleanup easier and to get it out easier when it's done chilling. So I'm gonna take my foil and kind of gently press it into my pan. For me when I do this, the corners are always the trickiest part. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just kind of want to line it. So We've got it basically lined on the inside. And that's, so when it is done, and when it's hardened long enough, I'm just fixing the corner a little bit here. <laughs> It'll hopefully very easily, we can pick, pick up the foil and pop it out of the pan. But also, just to make that even more likely, I'm gonna do a quick spray with this non-stick canola oil cooking spray. Okay. <clears throat> so, done with the spray, done with the foil. So I'm gonna set those aside. I always like to either clean up as I go or set ingredients aside as I go. Uh, just makes it easier to keep track. Okay, everything else now is gonna go into our microwave safe bowl. So first things first, we need a quarter cup. Let me grab a knife. We need a quarter cup of butter. So usually that's a half a stick or so or four tablespoons. So that's what I'm gonna do first here. And there are so many flavors of fudge out there, peanut butter, I mean, if you ever go someplace that sells fudge, I mean, yes, <clears throat> chocolate is the main one, but you can do chocolate mint, chocolate orange, peanut butter. Uh, you can do it with nuts, without nuts, with marshmallows. It's just, basically you have a ton of different options. 
So I'm going to put the whole quarter cup, which is about half a stick into my bowl. Then I need a cup and a half each of my chocolate chips. Cause we're going to, I'm going to do a mixture. I am more of a bitter chocolate, not a sweet chocolate girl, but my family members like things a little more sweet, not less sweet. So we'll just go with it. That way we got a nice mixture, so that's a good compromise. So a cup and a half. So I'm going to use my one cup. Put that in. Then just to be exact, use my half cup. I mean, fudge is fairly forgiving. You don't want to do huge differences, but you could probably just use your one cup and fill, fill it in half. So there's my one and a half of milk chocolate. So that's done. And then my cup and a half of semi-sweet. And we bake so much, I always have, always have uh, chocolate chips around. So again, cup and a half. These happen to be the mini chips that I use like when I make breakfast things sometimes. It doesn't matter. So there's one cup. Let's see if I have enough here to do a half. Pretty much. I'm going to open a new bag just a little because I don't want to be too short. I happen to have a spare here, so I'll open this other bag just to add a little bit more. Because like I said, you don't have to be exact, but you do kind of want to be close. So this is my half cup measurement. There we go. Didn't even take much, but in the half. Okay, so there is my semi-sweet. So, so far in the microwave safe bowl, I have my quarter cup of butter, which is half, half of one stick. I have one and a half cups of milk chocolate chips, one and a half cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So we're done with the other chocolate chips. I'm going to move those out of the way. Okay. And what I'm going to do just to start is kind of start this melting process. You can throw all the ingredients in at one time, but I'd like to get the chocolate a little bit softer before I start adding things like the marshmallow. So let me, we're going to do one minute to start. And let me open my recipe app just to make sure. We don't want to get anything wrong there. Okay. So we have lined our pan, we've added our chips. So now we're going to do one minute. And then this is kind of a touch and go. Everybody's microwave is different, right? Just like ovens are different. The one interesting thing about chocolate is once it gets melty, First of all, once it starts to melt, you can stir it and redistribute the heat and that will make more of the chocolate melt, even, though, even if it doesn't look like it's melting. And you can cook it too long, which you don't want to do. It's called seizing up. And it's like you've gone past the melting point and it starts to harden again. We want to, that's the one thing we do want to avoid. So right now we're just stirring the chocolate and the butter. Like I said, I can add in the, um, the only other two things I would add in soon are the uh, two envelopes of cocoa and the vanilla. I'm sorry, the sweet condensed milk. Okay, so this is funny. It's hard for you guys to see, but the bottom, the butter is melting and the milk chocolate, which is lower down, is starting to melt. So I'm going to take a minute. Now, boys and girls, if you're helping mom or dad or your grown-up. This part of my bowl is really quite warm, but the top and the handle are not because this is a microwave safe bowl, but we just have to be careful. Oh yeah, okay, so the milk chocolate and the butter are already melting quite a bit. It's not 100% at all but much more than you would think at first. I'm gonna show you guys so you can kind of see, let me get close. Hopefully you can see that. 
it's kind of looking like cake batter almost. So that shows that the chocolate is starting to melt. Since that's the case, I am going to now add my one can of sweetened condensed milk and my cocoa powder and then just warm it just a little bit more to kind of mix those ingredients in. Sweetened condensed milk, by the name condensed, it's very thick. So let me, you can see, look at that. It's really, really thick. So I'm gonna use my knife here to kind of help smooth that along a little bit. So there's our sweetened condensed milk. I'm gonna stir again for a minute. Just to kind of incorporate it a little bit. It also is important um, as you're adding this, now that it is pretty melted, I am definitely not going to put this back in the microwave and do like another minute, right? I'm gonna maybe, maybe do another 10, 15 seconds and just do a little at a time. So there goes one packet of hot chocolate. Let me stir it in. Let me show you. It's very powdery, sitting on top of my melted chocolate. So we started with half a stick of butter, which is a quarter cup, and one and a half cups milk chocolate, one and a half cups semi-sweet chocolate, microwaved for a minute. And as I thought, the butter melted and the, uh, some of the milk chocolate melted, which was on the bottom and also closer to the melted butter. And you could see that it had melted quite a bit. And that's why I got out my spatula and started stirring right away. Okay, so then since that was true, I now added the can, the one can, which is 14 ounces of semi, I'm sorry, sweetened condensed milk and I'm supposed to do the two packets of cocoa. So here's my second packet of hot chocolate. I think it's important to point out, we're talking about instant hot chocolate because if you buy just cocoa powder, that is not sweetened. That's actually a powder you would get from the cacao, right? From that process, those pods we talked about when they grind it down. So all the chocolate we eat like right away, open the package and eat it, has been sweetened with some form of maybe some milk in it and definitely some sugar in it, some sweetener of some sort. Okay. And actually this is already, I might not even have to put this back in the microwave because it's really thick, but I also am not really seeing um, any individual chocolate chips anymore. Okay, so the final ingredient, vanilla. Vanilla and chocolate adds a nice extra depth of flavor. Sometimes people add coffee to chocolate. Let me just double check, I think it's one teaspoon. Oh, nope, I was wrong, two teaspoons. So let's do that. I'm glad I checked. One, two, okay. So there are the two teaspoons of vanilla extract, so that's done. And we're done with the butter and the sweetened condensed milk. So we've really got most of the things done. Okay, so I'm gonna now incorporate or stir in that vanilla though to make sure we get the nice flavor of that. Plus it adds, it's kind of slightly oily. And what that does is add a little bit of moisture. Because once you get this fudge going, it is pretty thick. Fudge batter or fudge as you're making it. What I do like too though, back in the day, and you can still do it, but some people use a candy thermometer and they get to this certain temperature point 
uh, to make the fudge set or stay, if you will. And this recipe is very easy and forgiving. You don't have to worry about that, which I like. And I love that you just need a microwave. Okay, so we've stirred in. So now, once that's in and the vanilla's in, I'm gonna stir in two cups of marshmallows into the fudge, like mix it in. Let me show you this fudge consistency though. So there is no individual morsels left, you guys. It's super thick, as you can see, because my spoon will stay. But it's just thick, gooey, awesome, chocolatey wonderfulness. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, put in two, of course we're talking about mini marshmallows, right? When it came to big ones, that would just be way too much. So, two cups, let's do this, I'll use the small one. Which, since I'm using a half, will be four of these. So that's a half. There's one. And then a half. And two. And then I kinda gotta, oh boy. This is like, uh, they were talking about in the book about it being like white quicksand. This is really thick and I'm really gonna stir it though and work it because I want those marshmallows mixed in through the whole thing of fudge, right? That way every piece, once you cut it, will have marshmallows in it. I'm doing something called folding so you start at the bottom and you kind of flip. Start at the bottom, flip. Bottom, flip. And that is the best way. And that's kind of interesting because you really get all the way to the bottom, which is a lot of times where you might find some dry ingredients still or parts that don't get the full mixture if you're mixing something in. So now you can see some of the little marshmallows poking through, right? Okay. Let me move some of this. It's time to, believe it or not, place our fudge into our pan. And it's gonna just kinda come out in a big mess here. And I don't have marshmallows completely at the bottom because it's so thick, but I do have them spread throughout the batter pretty well. And now I just have to kind of slowly push this into all the corners of my pan. And the nice thing is, even though this is very thick, it's still uh, pliable, soft, almost like Play-Doh. So we've got time. Nothing is hardening so fast that we're on this big time crunch and should feel hurry, hurry, hurry before it's too late. There really isn't a too late as long as you kind of keep working and get it situated. But I'm trying to make sure I spread it into the corners and that it's pretty even as I go. I'll show you in one minute because I feel like it's a little thicker in the center here. Because a lot of times when we pour, right, we start at the center and work our way to the edges, which is fine. But then I want to make sure it's pretty even. Okay, so here we go. And I'm gonna get closer again and show you. So here it is. Really, it looks, looks like brownie batter, cake batter, whatever. I'm gonna wash my hands one more time, even though I did right before we started, even though you guys might not have seen that. Because with this final step, I'm going to take one more cup of marshmallows as the topping. Just like when you have a cup of cocoa, you can put marshmallows on top as a topping. Although let's chime in on the comments. And I know I've asked this before in winter's past. Are you a marshmallow person or a whipped cream person on top of your cocoa? Or are you both? I am a, uh, I must admit, a whipped cream camp person. I prefer whipped cream, but I do like marshmallows too. Okay, so one more cup on top. So here's one. I'm going to just kind of sprinkle it and I'll show you guys in a minute. 
And then I can just tell this remaining bit is about another half cup. There we go. Okay, so then I'm just gonna, and I'll show you in one second, I'm just kind of spreading it around the top of the fudge. So it kind of looks like random. I think I have a few more here. Oh, they're popping all over the place. Okay, so I'm gonna just place a few more and then I'll show you. Okay. And then it says, which makes sense, you wanna kind of pat it down though, and that's why I washed my hands a second time because if you submerge it kind of a little bit in the fudge that's in process, which is kind of like quicksand, right? And then we're gonna refrigerate it. You'll have it kind of a topping for your fudge. There we go. And look at how nice that is. It's not moving, it's not even sliding because fudge is just that thick. And you will notice too, like I said, chocolate's always got a little bit of oil to it. And definitely with the butter and then the vanilla extract, you're gonna feel that a little bit. But that's it. That is our fudge. What you wanna do then is put it in your refrigerator and leave it at least four hours. I know it's tough to be patient. So this can either be a, you could do it earlier in the day. You can be more than four hours. So if you end up making it later in the day it can be um, overnight and then what you're going to do is pull the whole thing out like this i'm not going to do it but you grab the foil and lift it out set it on the counter you can set it on a plate or on a um, cutting board and then to cut it you want a sharp knife and fudge is very rich so you probably don't need a lot like even something like this I would cut it into at least 16 pieces, maybe smaller, like little cubes. And if your knife starts to stick, you can always run it under warm water, wipe it off, but if it's warm, it'll cut through the fudge a little easier. So that's a nice tip or trick when it comes to cutting it. Then you can save it, bring it out at the holidays, you can eat it right away, um, or you can package it up and like I said, make it, just put it in a little container for somebody. Once you've cut it, it can stay out on the counter. There's no ingredients that really need to be refrigerated or you can refrigerate it. But if you, whatever you're gonna do, put it in an airtight container. That way it won't dry out. I think that's it, you guys. I was gonna uh, show you the after, but the fudge was sitting on the counter and guess what? It disappeared, not from me, but other members of my family. So, but once you take it out, give it four hours, cut it into nice little cubes, little slices you'll see it's very easy very delicious you can add nuts to this you can make it very however you want but this recipe as it is is gluten free so i hope you enjoy that and i wish all of you guys a happy holiday thank you so much and oh also uh, over winter break at kids space we're going to have lots of great events lots of fun activities so check online to see what's coming up and december 15th which is rapidly approaching you can register for our January and February programs, which I hope you will. Thanks so much, you guys, for joining me. Happy holidays. Stay warm, stay cozy, enjoy your cocoa. Bye.